Hey there, tech enthusiast. I'm Mikey Pruitt from DNS Filter with a secure DNS provider testing deep dive. If you're all about internet security and the wonders of DNS, you're in the right place. Today, we're dissecting the mysteries of secure DNS provider testing and unveiling my DNS testing script inspired by none other than Tom Lawrence. Every time I watch Tom's videos, I'm blown away by the insights. I've learned so much from Tom, and if you're as passionate about tech as I am, I bet you have too. Big thanks to Tom Lawrence for constantly inspiring and educating us all. Before we get started with today's topic, I highly recommend checking out Tom's video on the best DNS for secure browsing. It's an insightful watch that lays the foundation for what we'll be discussing here. Trust me, you'll gain a ton from it. So head over to Tom's channel, give it a watch, and then come back here for a deep dive. Tom tested over 8,000 domains against big players like Cloudflare, Quad9, NextDNS, and AdGuard DNS. The methodology? Thorough and insightful. He even provided his bash script in the Lawrence Systems forums, which I linked in the description. One key takeaway, not all DNS services are created equal. While some excel at blocking potentially malicious domains from a public threat list, others let them slip through the cracks. But here's the kicker. What defines a malicious site and who maintains these lists? Tom highlighted the challenges here too, emphasizing the gray areas in threat identification. The SANS Internet Storm Center decided to suspend its suspicious domain feed after feedback highlighted that many domains in the feed no longer resolved. Tom used that list in a 2020 DNS provider review. The original intent of the suspicious domain list was to aggregate various lists together. However, with only one or two lists remaining, the value of the service diminished. As a result, the decision was made to discontinue the feed until new input sources could be identified. While the respective files are still offered to avoid breaking any existing scripts that use them, they're essentially empty. In a nutshell, Tom's video is a gold mine for anyone researching secure DNS providers for home use. It's a blend of rigorous testing, valuable insights, and a dash of intrigue. However, as Tom constructively pointed out, the validity of the source domain file plays a pivotal role. Without a reliable threat domain list, even the most robust DNS provider can falter. Emphasizing that the foundation for our online security is only as strong as the data it's built upon. So here's the scoop. I've been doing this kind of DNS testing quite often for my work over at DNS Filter. It's kind of my jam. And when I saw Tom Lawrence's 2023 Secure DNS video, I thought, why not combine the best of both worlds? I've taken my universal DNS audit script, which I fine tuned over countless tests at DNS Filter, and fuse it with Tom's genius. The result? A supercharged, comprehensive DNS testing script that's ready to uncover some serious insights, even for enterprise grade secure DNS providers. So whether you're a DNS newbie or a seasoned pro, strap in. We're about to embark on a journey combining the expertise of DNS filter and the brilliance of Tom Lawrence. Let's check out the script. So just like Tom, I'll use the exact same source file, zonefiles.io's compromised domain list. Compromise in this context refers to domains that have been hijacked, misused, or otherwise manipulated for malicious purposes. This could be for phishing attacks, malware distribution, or any other nefarious activity. One of the standout features is the list is refreshed daily, ensuring that users have relatively up-to-date information at their fingertips. This is crucial because in the world of cybersecurity, threats evolve rapidly and having outdated info can be detrimental. And staying true to Tom's methodology, we're zeroing in on those .com and .net root domains. They're the most common, and we want to reduce the number of input domains so the test can be completed in a reasonable amount of time while maintaining its integrity. Running this script can take two to four hours depending on your setup and desired rate limiting. We're sorting the list alphabetically because, well, why not? And hey, who doesn't love some pretty terminal feedback? We've got some color variables set up to display which domain the script is currently processing and what is the result. I'll get back to results in a moment. We're focused on a range of DNS providers spanning from enterprise grade solutions like DNS filter and umbrella to fan favorite home user options like next DNS. While some of these services might need a bit of initial setup, such as signing up for a free trial and configuring a threat blocking policy, 
I promise you the results are enlightening and totally worth the effort. Unfortunately, it's difficult for me as an employee of DNS Filter to get a trial started on Zorus, Scout DNS, and Web Titan, but I encourage you to include them in your testing. And of course, we're not just doing this for fun, we're storing our results in these three CSV files. This way we can easily compare how each DNS provider performed. Now we're getting into the meat of the script. We're looping through each domain and checking how different DNS providers resolve it. But before we allow the main loop to process, there's an essential step I've incorporated, resolution status. Using Cloudflare's public resolver, I first ensure that each domain actually resolves, returning a no error status. This filters out any domains that are already non-functional or inaccessible. By doing this, we're able to reduce the domain list by about 35%. It's a simple upfront check to streamline the testing process and focus on what truly matters. If a domain doesn't resolve on this check, it will 100% be counted as a block for our test subjects, potentially skewing the results. There's a significant diversion from Tom's script. My aim to quickly determine if a domain is blocked or allowed by a particular secure DNS provider. Here's where things get interesting. For each DNS provider, I've incorporated either a case statement or an if statement to check for their specific block indicators. Now you might be wondering, why do we need these indicators? Well, each DNS provider has its own unique way of signaling that a domain is blocked. Some might return a specific IP address, like one of their block servers, while others might return a status code or even no IP at all. When DNS filter, umbrella, umbrella, family shield, next DNS and ad guard block a domain, they don't just leave you hanging. Instead, they return an IP address of one of their designated block servers. It's their way of saying, hey, this domain is a no-go. Some of these providers have their block server IPs publicly documented, making it straightforward to identify when a domain is being blocked. However, for others, it's not always so clear cut. Determining their block server IPs can require a bit of detective work involving trial and error. By repeatedly testing known malicious domains and observing the returned IPs, one can deduce which IPs are likely block servers and verify manually. Keep in mind these server IPs can and will change. Cloudflare Gateway and Cloudflare for Families have a more straightforward approach. If they've blocked a domain, they'll return an IP of all zeros. It's a clear and concise way to indicate that the domain is off limits. Using the results data to inform script refactors, I've included the return of an all zeros IP returning the local loopback IP of 127.0.0.1 and no IP returned as block indicators for all providers. I assume the loopback IP return indicates the operating system or perhaps ISP is blocking this specific domain. Let me know in the comments if you know why. Quad9 has its own finishing move. When it blocks the domain, it returns a status code of NX domain, not existent, and an authority value of zero plus no IP is returned at all. In the Quad9 world, this is a clear signal that the domain is blocked and is fully documented in their FAQs. Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1 and Google's 8.8.8.8.8 provide bare minimum DNS security and are included as a reference for the sake of completeness to give you a full picture. Plus, I use Cloudflare's public resolver to check resolution, which is probably their block indicator, making it an unfair analysis. So for reference only on those two. In cases where no IP is returned at all, I've taken the liberty to assign a value of null and mark the result as blocked. Why? Because if a domain doesn't resolve to an IP, it's inaccessible and as good as blocked. We are logging these results to three boring CSV files, but we're enjoying the adventure and having a bit of fun along the way. While the script is hard at work, you get a dynamic real-time view of the action. You'll see color-coded outputs with blocked domains highlighted in green for good, it's blocked, and allowed ones in red for uh-oh, it's not blocked. It's a live scoreboard of how each DNS provider is performing against the zone files compromise domains list. And the sleep command Tom included remains to avoid flooding the name servers. That's it for the script. If you're interested in deploying the DNS audit script that I've been discussing, grab it from my GitHub repo. Let's dive into the results of our protected DNS providers test. We've got some interesting findings here. Starting with DNS filter, we only block 15%, the least of the tested providers. That's not a strong showing. Should I look for a new job? 
What does this mean? Well, I'll get back to that. Moving on, both Umbrella and its family variants showcase an impressive block rate, only allowing 1% of the domains. Now Cloudflare's public service blocked 4% of the domains, but as I mentioned previously, is not meant to provide any security. So these block domains are clearly the worst of the worst. Their Cloudflare Gateway and Cloudflare for Families variants block 26%. Did you notice the similarities among Umbrella's and Cloudflare's variants? It's great to see the advanced filtering from their business offering is also reflected in their free family options. Google's DNS service blocked 4%, the same as Cloudflare's public DNS resolvers. From just a cursory glance, it appears the 4% blocked by these two are identical. Likely some very malicious domains there. All the data is available on GitHub if you want to dig further. Quad9 and NextDNS both had a block rate of 100%. Flawless victory. And not far behind is AdGuard with a 99% block rate. It's clear that some providers like Quad9, NextDNS, AdGuard, and Umbrella are ingesting the zone files compromised domain list. So let's talk about that. Tom Lawrence himself pointed out a significant hurdle in these tests, the authenticity of the source file. He emphasized that a real challenge isn't just about how many domains a provider blocks, but whether those domains should be blocked in the first place. The accuracy and relevance of the source file play a pivotal role in determining the effectiveness of any protective DNS provider. What if I told you that not all, quote, compromised domains are what they seem? Most of the domains on the popular zone files list fall under categories like park sites, outdated WordPress sites, or even annoying redirects to places like AliExpress. While they might not be what you're looking for, labeling them as malicious might be a stretch. In my test, I did not enable the park sites category on DNS filter, umbrella, Cloudflare gateway, or next DNS, but all are capable of blocking park sites. And guess what? The test subjects not ingesting the zone files list, DNS filter and Cloudflare, did not block most of them. But here's where it gets tricky. Some sites on the list, once deemed compromised, are now completely benign. Take, for instance, the website jkwardrobe.com, a happy clothing brand. Back in 2020, it was compromised while running on WordPress. Fast forward to now, and the site has transitioned to Shopify and is entirely safe for users. Yet it still finds its place on the compromised domain list from zone files. This underscores the importance of maintainers regularly updating and verifying domains on their lists. As outdated information can lead to false positives, blocking users from accessing legitimate and safe websites. And who doesn't need smiley face socks? Then there's masterchoicepizza.com, a genuine pizza place in London, Ontario, Canada. It seems their WordPress site had some malicious file scan in 2019, four years ago. But the site is now hosted by a Canadian online restaurant ordering system called Mealsy, which is a great name. Master Choices Pizza looks delicious, and if I'm ever in London, Ontario, I'll make a stop and have a slice. But their domain is still inaccessible to millions of people, even though the infection appears resolved. The takeaway? First, be careful with WordPress. And... Blindly trusting free malicious domain lists isn't true security. It's essential to understand the source and the criteria of these lists. List maintainers need to increase their diligence and take more responsibility for the impact their lists have on the rest of us. DNS Filter takes a proactive approach to threat intelligence, frequently categorizing and recategorizing, plus real-time verification. This ensures that our security is always up to date reflecting only the current threat landscape. With such a dynamic and responsive system in place, users protected by DNS filter can confidently navigate the web. Whether you fancy shopping for happy socks or ordering Canadian pizza, enjoy the seamless browsing experience without being hindered by unnecessary site blocks. Please review the script and point out any flaws you find. Like and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. Leave your thoughts and comments down below. And thanks for watching.